For section 6.3, we're looking at yet another strategy for finding percents. Just a refresher, you can set up a proportion where you have part over whole equals percent over 100. That's what we looked at in section 6.1. In section 6.2, we worked on some problems just using mental math. And then in this section, 6.3, we're going to solve percent problems using the percent equation. And that is yet another strategy for you to solve some problems um, involving taxes and other situations where we're solving um, percent problems. So if you take a look here, the vocabulary word is percent equation. So make sure that you get this into your notes. Notice there are some of the same vocabulary word part and whole and percent and if we multiply both sides by the whole we get that the part is equal to the percent times the whole just showing what you where that equation came from it's not just made up it does have um, an explanation behind it for example one we're finding 62 percent of 75 and we are just plugging in numbers and variables to represent that as an equation. So A is going to be the part that we're trying to figure out. So part is equal to 62%, which is 0.62 as a decimal, and then taking that times 75. When you multiply, you get 46.5. Let's take a look at the examples, 1A, find 60% of 96. So A, the part, is equal to 60%. You can either write 0 0.60 or you can write down 0 0.6. Of means to multiply and then 96. And so we have 57.6 when we take 0 0.60 times 96. In 1B, 45% of 70, we're going to say A is equal to 0.45 times 70, which is equal to 31.5. Make sure you get those into your notebook, and let's take a look at example 2. For example 2, we have the part, 287, given to us, and we have the whole, in this case 410, and so in example two we're trying to find the percent. So notice how they set this up. 287 is, the word is, is the equal sign, and then what percent, when we don't know something in algebra, we use a variable, and then of is multiplication, and then 410. We're just translating everything from words to symbols. P times 410, if we want to isolate the variable, we're going to divide both sides by 410, and we get that P is equal to 0.7, but remember we're trying to find the percent, so 0.7 is equal to 70%. Let's take a look at these two examples. One, sorry, 2A, 15 is, so that's 15 equals, what percent, I can use a P or I can use an X, it doesn't matter, of means to multiply, and then 125. If I want to isolate the variable, I'm going to divide both sides by 125. 125 divided by 125 is 1. And then when I take 15 divided by 125, I get 0.12, which translates to 12%. For 2B, we get 20 is what percent of 400? When you divide both sides by 400, we get 200, sorry, 20 divided by 400, which is 0 0.05. And to change that to a percent, we're going to move it over two places or multiply by 100 to get 5%. For example, 3, maybe you've already guessed it, we've solved for the percent and we've solved for the part. And so in example 3, we're going to solve for the whole. Again, just translating everything into numbers. 33 is equals 55% 0 0.33. 
0.55 of is multiply, and then what number is our variable? And we're still dividing both sides to isolate the variable, and when we do that, we get our answer. So let's translate a few of these for example 3a and 3b. 18 is, 18 equals 30%, we're going to write that as 0 0.30 of is multiplication, what number is x? Divide both sides by 30. 30 divided by 30 is 1, leaving x by itself. 18 divided by 30 is 60. No, 18 divided by 30 is not 60. 18 divided by 0.30 is 60. Sorry about that. Uh, for 3b, 79 is 0 0.80 times x. Divide by 0 0.8, divide by 0 0.8. 79 divided by 0 0.8 is 98.75. In your notes, you have this concept summary chart and I would like for you to copy down the example and the equation, just knowing that the equation sometimes has P in the percent position or in the part position or in the whole position, just like we saw with the proportion. But the equation works similarly, and we can solve for any one of those items just by switching around the variables. So we've looked at a proportion method and a mental method and a equation method now. The last couple examples on section 6.3 are involving some uh, real-world problems involving taxes. Let's take a look at this one really quickly. A camera cost $250 and there's a 6% sales tax. There's a couple different ways to do this problem. To find the tax, you can take 6%, 0.06 times 250, and you get 15. Now 15 is not the cost of the camera, that's just the amount of tax. So we have to take the $250 camera plus $15 tax to get $265 total. That's one method of finding the tax. Notice on method 2, 100% plus 6% combined is 1.06. Now why would you use this method? Well in one step it gives you the price of the camera which is the 100% part and it includes the price of the tax which is 6% and in one calculation you get $265. Same answer that we got in method 1 but method 2 is just one step. It's really a matter of preference on um, these problems. I like the second method better because it's one less step, but you can choose how you want to do these problems. Mr. Potter bought a house for $175,000, and then he sold it for a 24% profit. What's the sale price of the house? Okay, so if it was just asking for just the profit, you would take $175,000 times 0.24, okay? And when you do that, when you take 175, whoops, 175,000 times 0.24, you get just the profit, which is $42,000, okay? So 42,000. But it's not asking for that, it's asking for the sale price, and so you would want to add that 42,000 to the 175,000. But you would get the same answer if you took 175,000 times 1.24. Timesing it by that one includes the price of the house plus the 24% for um, the sale profit. And so either way, whether you multiply it by 0.24 and then add it on, or whether you multiply it by 1.24 in the beginning, you still get the final answer of $217,000. On example five, it says that Mr. Lee bought a memory card for $138.89 and that included tax and it was the sticker price was $129.20 and it wants to know the sales tax. 
So in this case, the sales tax is what he paid, including tax, take away the sticker price, which is $9.69. So $9.69 is what percent of 129.20? So we're dividing by 129.20 to find out that the percent is not 0 0.075, but moving that decimal over two places, it was a 7.5% sales tax. Another way to get that same exact answer is to take the total price and divide that by the sale price to get 1.075. So the total cost is 1.075 or 107.5% and that is equal to a sales tax of just the 7.5%. Either method works. Find which one you like and then try that a few times. So a $45 mixer sold for $47.70 with tax. What's the percent of sales tax? I could take my $47.70 right and divide that by 45 and when I do that I take 47.7 divided by 45 and I get 1.06 now think about that before you just write it down 1.06 is the uh, total cost it's 1.06 or 106 percent of the sticker price. So if we take out that 100 percent, we get 0 0.06, which is 6 percent tax. Another way of doing that is to take 47.70 minus 45, which is $2.70, and $2.70 is, is the part. So 270 equals what percent of $45 and when we divide by 45, divide by 45, we get 2.7 divided by 45, which is, whoops, 2.7 divided by 45, which is 0 0.06. Again, same answer, just a different method, two steps versus one step. 0 0.06 is the same thing as 6% tax, okay? Good luck with section 6.3 and calculating percents using the percent equation and doing some work with taxes. Let me know if you have any questions.